Hello everyone, welcome back to What If Izuku Was a Leveling Hero? Be sure to like, share, and check out the author, AC1 Ermai. Again, the author's first language isn't English. I can only catch so many spelling mistakes. Also, this story is not yet completed, so this will be season 1 of this. So, be sure to check out. The link's in the description down below. And with that let's begin. Chapter 45 Two days after Izuku woke up, a lot of people gathered in front of a multi-story building with a sword symbol and the rising sun above it. Today was the day the Dawn Guild would be officially founded. Many reporters had gathered in front of the building that would become the Dawn Guild's office since early in the morning. They were all waiting for the appearance of one person who had become a topic in various media, the youngest S-rank Izuku. Ever since they heard that the person had joined the guild founded by another S-rank Ikaru Hiroto, they immediately tried to get information regarding the matter. As they looked around, they received information that Hunter Izuku had just cleared a double dungeon. They tried to confirm this through the association, but the association was extremely strict about guarding information regarding Hunter Izuku, making it difficult for them to obtain this information. As a result, the search for information stopped, and they had no other choice but to wait until the day of the inauguration arrived. Finally, their waiting and efforts paid off with the start of the delayed inauguration of the Dawn Guild. The event will be held inside the building, and is currently being investigated by journalists who will enter the building before the event starts. Not only were the reporters arriving earlier, but the core members of Dawn's Guild were also gathered in separate rooms though not all of them. Several familiar faces appeared among the gathered people. All of Ikiru's team members also gathered in formal attire. They gather around him, cheering on Ikiru who is nervous about having to give a public speech. No need to be so nervous. Is this the attitude a guild master should have? Even though Kyoko was by his side patting Ikiru's back to calm him down, the color of Ikiru's face didn't change one bit. Kyoko is right. There's no need to be so nervous. Even your guild representatives are still calm, Daichai added, while pointing at Izuku who was sitting across the table while checking his phone. Feeling called out, Izuku looked up to see the people talking about him. He just smiled and waved his hand before returning to monitoring the news regarding their guild. Well, at least he wasn't the one speaking in public. Hearing this, Kyoko immediately hit Ikiru on the back. Stop with your nonsense. You will come out there as a leader and not a coward. Okay, okay. After being scolded by Kyoko, for some reason Ikiru calms down. It seems that talking to colleagues is enough to help Ikiru calm down. Seeing his colleagues talking and laughing at each other made Izuku smile before finally looking back at his cell phone screen. Since yesterday, Izuku has been monitoring the news related to the founding of the Dawn Guild. He tried to ascertain how much related information had been leaked to the media. And after he looked around it seemed that the most discussed topic was about himself. The youngest S-rank joined the Dawn Guild. The Dawn Guild was founded by S-rank Ikiru Hiroto. List of hunters who joined the Dawn Guild. The Vice Guild Master of Dawn Guild. Looking at the news titles on the media page, some information seems to have been leaked. But the information is nothing more than a leak about what will be announced later. So this is not a big thing. The problem is how this information was leaked. I'll figure it out later. For now, let's just focus on the inauguration. Izuku checked the time on his phone. Less than 10 minutes before the event started, everyone was already ready to head out. Uzuku, what are you doing? Let's go. All right, I'll catch up soon. Izuku immediately followed them, leaving the waiting room and heading to where the inauguration ceremony was held. The event started promptly at 10 a.m. As Ikiru and the rest of the Dawn Guild appear, the camera flash quickly snaps of them. Ikiru immediately stood on the podium, while the other members lined up behind him. As soon as he saw the people and the camera lights in front of him, the nervousness he had forgotten returned. It took him a while to calm down. But once he was back, he was able to be himself again. He confidently glanced at the people in front of him and immediately started his speech. 
Everyone who witnessed Ikaru's speech couldn't hide their admiration for the charisma he exuded. Just by seeing him standing confidently on the podium, they could feel that Ikaru was a reliable leader. Thanks to his experience leading various teams during dungeon raids, he formed who he is today. The speech, which lasted 15 minutes, ended with a ribbon cutting that marked the official establishment of the building, which also became the office of the Dawn Guild, and was also accompanied by applause from the people present. The event continued with a small party to welcome investors and high-ranking officials who came. The party was held quite luxurious considering the guests who came. For some, it's the first extravagant party they attend especially for Izuku and the others. This was their first time attending such a lavish party. I can't believe they threw a party like this. Well, considering the guests are coming, it wouldn't be strange for it to be this extravagant. I don't understand how rich people think. Don't you have much money yourself? Aren't you the same? I can't even answer. It's good that you know about it, by the way. Looks like Ikiru no. The guild master seems to have made some new friends. While Izuku and Tadaroki were talking, Ikaru was surrounded by many people who were investors and sponsors. Despite being surrounded by so many important people, Ikaru can deal with them well. Since earlier, the people who had gathered around him seemed comfortable talking to him. Although no one knows what intentions are hidden behind their sweet words. As Izuku watched them, someone approached him. Izuku turned to look at the person approaching him. His composure was momentarily shaken when he saw the head of the hunting bureau Matsumoto Shija walking towards him. I was wondering where you were. Apparently you are here. Izuku bowed down as soon as he saw Matsumoto. Behind Matsumoto, he could see Sujimoto with a tired face. Izuku also tried to look to the side, but the figure of his best friend was nowhere to be seen. It seemed he had left before the trouble came, left alone. Izuku could only smile awkwardly facing Matsumoto in front of him. Long time no see chairman, how are you? Hey long time no see. Thank you for being able to attend today's event. Since you invited me of course I have to attend, by the way, congratulations on the official founding of the Dawn Guild. Thank you for your kind words. Forget that nonsense, I have something to ask you. Be sure. Feel free to ask. Is this guild the reason why you rejected my offer? Izuku paused when he heard Matsumoto's question. He knew this question would come sooner or later. It could be seen that there was displeasure in the tone that Matsumoto used. While maintaining a fake smile on his face, Izuku gave his answer. To be honest, the reason why I declined your offer is that I feel that I still lack a lot. I don't think I'm fit to take the leader's position. Besides, compared to Ikiru-san, I also lack experience. Is that the only reason you joined that fellow's guild? I have known Ikiru-san for a long time. He is a mentor as well as a person I respect. Matsumoto looked at Izuku with a disgruntled look. He glared at the child who was smiling in front of him as if threatening him. Though the stare didn't affect Izuku. Well, it's up to you. I hope you don't regret this choice of yours. Matsumoto then walked past him walking towards the exit, while still glaring at him as they passed each other. Izuku could sense the hostility Matsumoto gave him. Looks like the list of people hating him has grown. Sujimoto, who was still in place, just stared at Izuku with a fake smile on his statue-like face. You can take off your smile now the chairman is gone. As soon as Sujimoto said that, Izuku's face returned to its normal face as he did not hide his displeasure at meeting the association leader. Sujimoto knew exactly how Izuku felt facing Chairman Matsumoto since he had to deal with him every day, so he only could sympathize with Izuku. Now that you've wiped that smile away, you look better. Honestly, I don't want to meet the chairman, especially at a time like this. Well, it's not something you can just run away from since he was also your previous superior. By the way, congrats on the inauguration of the Dawn Guild. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Sujimoto-san. Well, don't mention it. How could I not come when I was also involved in establishing the first guild in Japan? Ha ha ha, you're right. While Izuku and Sujimoto were still talking, 
Ikuru, who had finished talking to the guests, approached the two of them. In front of those two people, Ikiru didn't bother to hide his tired face. His shoulders, which were straight before now dropped slightly like a leaf exposed to hot water. Izuku and Sujimoto could only smile in sympathy with what Ikiru had to go through. Thank you for your hard work, guild master, Izuku spoke, while offering Ikiru a drink which he immediately accepted. Ikiru immediately emptied the glass as soon as he received it. His mentality was quite drained by the meeting with the guests earlier. Yeah, thanks Izuku. Your face looks terrible. Shouldn't you be resting now? Sujimoto also added when he saw Ikiru's pale face. It's fine. As the guild leader I should at least do this much. And I should get used to it since there will be more incidents like this in the future. Well that part can't be helped. Don't worry Ikiru-san. I will make sure to support you as vice guild master. Both Sujimoto and Ikiru turned their gazes to Izuku. Izuku was a little confused because they suddenly looked at him. Lee, did I say something wrong? Look at this kid. He's starting to act like the vice guild master now. If you wanted to help, you should have helped me from the start, vice guild master. Ah, sorry. Seeing Izuku's response, which was too mild, made Ikiru frown. He could guess Izuku's intention of wanting nothing to do with the people he valued to report. If you don't want to do it, just say it. You don't have to apologize like that. Ha ha ha. I got caught. Jess, this kid. At least hide your bad intentions. Ha ha ha. Don't laugh, kid. They continued to talk until the event was almost over. Many of the guests had also left, leaving behind the few remaining Dawn Guild members. Izuku was also the last to be there. He still had something to take care of at the guild office. After all the guests left, Izuku then headed to his office, which was on the top floor of the building. Arriving at the door of his room, Izuku immediately opened the door of his room. Inside, it looks like a new office that is still a mess with a room full of unorganized file boxes. Izuku looked around at the room he would be working in from now on. He then walked to the bedroom window. The view of the city of Tokyo with tall buildings is presented from behind the glass window. As he was looking out over the city, the door to his room opened and someone entered the room. Without even seeing him, Izuku already recognized the person. Izuku, what are you doing here? Seeing Izuku standing in front of Ikiru's window, he approached him and stood beside him. Nothing, just take a look before coming back. Is that so? Ikiru then turned his gaze in the direction Izuku was looking. View of the city with the hustle and bustle of the people passing by. What a good view. I think so too. It's pretty peaceful. You're right. This makes me excited to think about what will happen in the future. Ikiru wore a confused expression when he heard Izuku's sudden statement. Well now that the Dawn Guild is officially established, other guilds will start appearing. I'm just curious what winds will blow this guild, and how far the Dawn Guild will grow. Understanding what Izuku meant, Ikiru smiled involuntarily, and turned his gaze back to the cityscape in front of him. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Chapter 46 Several months passed after the establishment of the Dawn Guild. During that time, several guilds also formed following the leader of the Dawn Guild such as the Arashi Guild founded by S-rank Tatsumi Fujishima and the Moonlight Guild founded by S-rank hunter Yumiko Aoi. In addition to these two guilds, several small guilds have also been established, but their popularity is not as famous as the three guilds. Currently in Japan, the Dawn Guild holds the position of the number one guild, with a considerable difference from the Arashi Guild occupying second place all thanks to the hard work of one person who manages everything from behind the scenes. He was the one who worked hard managing the dungeons, raid teams, armaments, and guild budgets. And now the man was trapped in his room, with piles of documents filling the room. His eyes and hands kept moving between the documents in his hand and the computer keyboard. Aside from Izuku who was in the room, several shadow soldiers he summoned also helped him organize the documents. Thanks to his ability that allows him to connect with his shadow soldiers, Izuku's job has become a little lighter. 
Even so, he couldn't see the last documents from this pile since they kept coming. While Izuku was focusing, a knock sounded on his door. Without looking away from the document in front of him, Izuku directly motioned for the person who knocked in. Come in. The door opened and revealed Sujimoto, who was visiting with a bento box in his hand. He looked at the scene in front of him with puzzled and horrified eyes. He witnessed how shadow soldiers paced around the room carrying documents. You seem to be busy. As you can see, these documents have not stopped arriving since the success of the last raid and the number of applicants who have submitted. Right? I remember it was quite exciting. A week ago, the Dawn Guild completed a raid on an A-Rank dungeon classified as High Rank. They finished it with just five first-team men. Some media even made this raid their headline. Thanks to that, the popularity of their guild is even increasing. The number of people trusting their guilds increased. All thanks to the people working behind the counter. Sujimoto just snorted at how hard Izuku worked. For some reason, he felt bad when he saw Izuku working hard without complaining. I understand you are busy, but at least pay attention to your health. Here, eat this. Sujimoto put the bento box he carried on Izuku's table. That's when Izuku looked away from the computer and faced Sujimoto. Yes, thank you. Leaving Izuku back at his job, Sujimoto walked out of the room. When he was about to go to the elevator, he ran into Todoroki, who happened to also be visiting Izuku. They then exchanged light greetings as their eyes met. Todoroki, are you planning to meet Izuku? Yes, I have something to talk to him about. I see. I just want to say that that kid is busy right now. But it seems that you can be a good reason to force the child to rest. Did he lock himself in his room again? Just say so. Okay, I'll make sure to take him out. I'm counting on you. After nodding lightly, Todoroki walked away from Sujimoto and went straight to Izuku's room. Sensing a presence approaching his room, Izuku thought Sujimoto had something left in his room, and he let him in before there was even a knock. Although confused for a moment, Todoroki immediately opened the door. As Todoroki arrived in the room, his reaction was more or less similar to Sujimoto's. You seem to be busy. Izuku lifted his head from the monitor as soon as he recognized a voice different from Sujimoto's. Todoroki-san, what's the matter? Nothing just visits you and wants to talk about something. About what? Your offer at that time, is it still valid? Izuku was silent for a moment, thinking about which offer Todoroki would talk about. But it didn't take him too long before he realized which one. He looks at Todoroki's face seeing if there's any change that he just joking. But seeing the serious expression on Todoroki's face made Izuku certain that he was not joking. Izuku then pulled his hand away from his keyboard and smiled at Todoroki. I've been waiting for your answer, but I wonder what made you decide so suddenly. But a few days before, Todoroki and his team were carrying out a raid on a dungeon that appeared in Tokyo. With himself as the leader, he brought four other members with him. Todoroki may not be cut out as a leader, but he is undoubtedly capable of bringing his team safely to the boss room. His potential and strength are enough for him to rise to S rank. Even though Todoroki has no interest in it, it seems someone has already prepared his re-evaluation without his knowledge. The raid that started in the morning ended at noon, as it took them quite a while to get the ghoul corpses out of the gate due to their size. As soon as he finished his report, Todoroki decided to head back first. For some reason, he had to take a detour to the dormitory because there was an incident of attacking a villain in an area he usually passed through which annoyed him a bit. As he was taking a detour, he accidentally bumped into someone causing the person to fall and her luggage scattered. Ouch. That person frantically collects back the things scattered on the floor. Seeing this, Todoroki then tried to help the person collect her things, but as he was about to hand them over to that person, how surprised he was when he saw the person's face. White hair, with a hint of red, glasses, and a very familiar face. In front of him was the figure of Todoroki Fayumi, the little sister he had not seen for a long time. 
Instantly, his head went blank. Everything around him seemed to stop. His outstretched hand was cold. He couldn't think of anything because of the panic at this unexpected reunion. Meanwhile, Fayumi who fell finished collecting her fallen things. Seeing the hand stretched out towards her, Fayumi accepted it happily, without noticing the confused and panicked face that the person who helped her had. Feeling hands touching his fingertips, Taoya immediately snapped out of his reverie and helped Fayumi up. I'm sorry I was in a rush so I didn't notice. No, I'm also sorry for not paying attention. Hearing a familiar voice, Fayumi looked at the face of her interlocutor. Seeing a familiar irritated face, Fayumi immediately recognized him. Ah, you. Aren't you Izuku-kun's friend? If I'm not mistaken your name is... Dabai-san, am I right? For some reason, Taoya felt bitter when his sister recognized him by someone else's name. But what can he do? Todoroki Taoya has long been gone for Fayumi and his other family. Right now they were strangers who happened to know each other thanks to a certain someone. Yes, that's correct. Thank God, I almost thought I had the wrong person. Nice to see you again Dabai-san by the way. How is Izuku now? It's been hard to contact him lately. He is fine. Really? Nice to hear that. Please tell him to contact us at least once in a while. Of course. There was awkwardness between them. Fayumi, who was confused about how to continue the conversation, decided to end the conversation and return to its original purpose. T then excuse me. You seem quite in a rush. Sorry. Um, that, if you may, may I help you? Hearing this Fayumi was a little confused but quickly her expression softened again. It's not good to refuse the kindness that someone offers. Fayumi then smiled again and answered immediately. Of course. Fayumi handed Taoya some of her luggage, which he accepted with an awkward face. They then walked off, led by Fayumi. Several minutes passed without speaking, and each of them was lost in their thoughts. To break the silence, Fayumi decided to strike up a conversation. Um, Dabai-san, if I may ask where were you going? That. I was just about to go home. I see. I heard from Izuku that you are also a hunter. Is that true? That's how it is. Then what's your rank? A rank. Is that so? Then what about you? Me? Where are you going with this much luggage? Ah, this. Well, to be honest... It's the anniversary of my brother's death soon. I want to visit his grave with my younger brothers. But it seems that I can't. Why? That's because my youngest brother has to take an exam today, and my other sibling Natsu still has lectured in his college. Is that why you go out alone? Just say so. But now I'm not alone, all thanks to you. Hearing this, Talia couldn't help but swallow the bitter taste in his mouth. Not only did they meet accidentally, but Taoya consciously helped his family, the people he had always tried to avoid. To put it mildly, this was quite tortuous for Taoya. But even so, Taoya remained loyal to accompanying Fayumi until they arrived at the cemetery. The cemetery is located on a hill, not far from where the Todoroki family lives. Taoya, who witnessed this scene reminisced about the incident that happened to him, when he first received awakening. The heat of the scorching fire and the pungent smell of monster corpses made him sick just thinking about it. The pain he experienced at that time did not go away until now. Following Fayumi who had walked ahead, they arrived at a diner that had the name Todoroki Taoya engraved on it. Fayumi then knelt in front of the meal and began to pray. Witnessing this, Taoya could only remain silent as he continued to pay attention to his own grave. There was a strange feeling when he saw his name engraved on the tombstone. While Talia was deep in thought, Fayumi had finished her prayer. He then opened his eyes and put down the flowers he brought to the grave. While smiling he slowly stroked the name engraved on the tomb. This is my brother's grave. He died when I was little. Hearing this Talia immediately snapped out of his reverie. He looked back at Fayumi, who had a longing expression on her face. There is. So, 
May I know what kind of person your brother is? How should I say? He is a good big brother. He cares about his younger siblings, even though sometimes he has a scary expression. I know he is obsessed with heroes and doesn't like our father. But even so, he still wants to play with us. Fayumi talked about her brother in a nostalgic tone and occasionally laughed remembering the past. Hearing this made Taoya's heart stab. Not only was he hiding the fact that he was still alive, but he was also pretending to be someone else. Then do you miss your brother? Of course I miss him. Is that so? If there's any chance that your brother was still alive, what would you do? Fayumi paused for a moment. She did have a small hope that her brother was still alive and his family wasn't in a mess like now. If his brother Taoya was still alive, maybe his childhood dream where the whole family could have dinner together could come true. But all of that is impossible, not with the atmosphere at home after their mother was hospitalized. You ask a strange question, don't you? I'll just say that I'm a curious person. Well, if that happens then I might cry tears of joy and we can have dinner together like a family. Instead of answering Taya fell silent, he couldn't bring himself to answer. However, his hands clenched tight enough, showing his determination that had dictated a decision that might change his life. And with that, I'll see you all in the next part. For those who are interested, we have a Discord down below. Be sure to aim for the stars, drink plenty of water, and for us to cause chaos. With that take care until next we see each other again.